Hello everyone, back to you in today's second video update. So we're going to do a quick update to bring you up to date with the uh, latest shorter range model runs uh, that we've got going out to the next sort of 7 to 10 days. So talking about GFS, um, Eastern of the we haven't got the midday run of that, but we've got uh, this morning's uh, midnight run of the ECMD, but we've got the midday runs of all the other uh, models to uh, show you. Um, I'll just bring you up to date with what's happening for uh, next week, because obviously we've been talking about the chance of this easterly wind for uh, next week. Looks like the chance of that are diminishing, but we may start to see some much colder air digging in from the west and the north, actually, as we get through into the middle part of um, January. So the, uh, the forecast update sort of remains quite uh, interesting from a cold perspective, as it has been really from the start of this winter. Looks like the jet stream will continue to be on a subway track over the next 7 to 10 days. And uh, there will be some more wintry potential coming up at times. So I'll take through all of the dollar of runs in a moment. Before we get on that, just say that uh, we released January Friday early t earlier today. As always on a Friday, having a detailed look at the weather month ahead with the Japanese CFS V2 models. You can find that video here on the homepage, just scroll down the page a bit, and it's above the slow test. We'll begin uh, tonight's video with the ECM WF. Now that's updating just as I'm speaking right now. It won't be fully out until 7 o'clock, but it's got to be too late um, to bring you that. So uh, this, is, this, this is this morning's uh, midnight run of the ECM WS. I'll just show you what it's going for uh, when it updated at midnight. Uh, so we find that on Tuesday, we've got the high pressure in over Scandinavia. We've got winds in from the east. They aren't particularly cold, but they will be fairly raw uh, winds. So they're not bringing very cold air from Siberia, nothing like that, but it will be pretty chilly to say the least at the start of the coming week and, of course, over this weekend. Now, very quickly, the midnight run of the East Indies has started to move this area of low pressure in from off the Atlantic. So it's a very unsettled run, actually, uh, that we have from the East Indies this morning with these westerly winds extending. You'll remember that a couple of days ago, this model was going for a real easterly outbreak uh, for next week. Now it's completely flipped on that. It's been a very, very poor performance from the East Indies. It's quite unusual because we do rate the ECM as just about the best model. Um, it's not as uh, big a gap as it used to be a few years ago between the ECDF and the GFS. They have closed, narrowed the gap, uh, Noah, uh, as they've updated uh, and upgraded their model. They have narrowed that gap between the ECM and the GFS. But even so, um, the ECM still rates usually as the best model. But you'll see here, for example, by Friday the 12th of January, we're actually pulling up really quite a mild southwesterly wind. Just two days ago, this model was showing by Friday the 12th of January a proper easterly outbreak with uh, really cold east winds digging in from Russia and uh, also, of course, bringing in the risk of snow. We certainly don't have that uh, on this chart. I suspect it's probably swung too far the other way, if anything, now. It's probably swung too far towards mild and unsettled. It'll be very interesting to see what it shows uh, as it updates for the midday uh, run of the east of the Anyway, that's what it was showing the midnight run on Friday. That mild southwesterly wind. And then as going to weekend of the 13th and the 14th of January, just moving these areas of low pressure in from off the Atlantic. <coughs> Excuse me. And these low pressures are actually containing some quite cold air uh, to their north. So as we run up towards day 10, and this takes us to day 10, which is Monday the 15th of January, we find this low pressure just to the west of uh, Ireland. And as I said, there is some quite cold air pushing down on the northern side of this area of low pressure. Notice we still have high pressure uh, lurking up here. It isn't enough to be giving us an easterly wind at this point, but uh, it's still lurking up there. And if we could run on another 24 hours, which you can't, but if we could, because the jet stream we're indicated by the black line here, that is still digging to our south. It's been a situation that had all winter so far, but the jet stream wants to go to our south and place us on the cold side of these areas of low pressure. If we could run on another 24 hours, I suspect the ECM would take that low pressure in that sort of direction and would pull colder air from the north and also from the northwest into the UK and the west of Europe. So actually, although the ECM this morning midnight run was really quite a mild update, it did finish up hinting that if we could go on another day or so, it would probably get quite cold. 
Right, rest of the charts that you see are going to be based on the midday runs, the very latest runs. So we're starting off with the uh, UK Met Office, their own model. I don't often include uh, this in the video, but I thought I would tonight. Uh, so we're beginning on Tuesday. We only go out to uh, Thursday uh, with this. It's a slightly shorter uh, range, but it goes to 144 hours. So this is how it looks on Tuesday with, again, the high pressure is in over Scandinavia. We've got the low pressure out to the west of the UK trying to move away from in from off the Atlantic. There's a stall taking place here as we go through into the middle part of next week. So it doesn't run the low pressure in as quickly as certainly the ECMDF is doing. There's a weather front strung out there. Not sure if the air is particularly cold. It probably isn't cold enough for snow, except maybe over the Pennines and uh, perhaps over Scotland. But many parts of the country would have quite a bit of cold rain, I would have thought, uh, with that. And then we go through to, uh, as far as we can go, 144 hours with the UK Met Office model, and it looks like this. So still a much stronger ridge over Scandinavia compared to uh, what the ECMDF is doing at uh, that time frame. Uh, we've got low pressure out here, and we're trying to run these southwesterly winds in, bring milder air in, but uh, they really are struggling, and there's still a dip going on within the 500 millibar flow and the jet stream. So um, we would probably still be cold even up to that point, or quite cold up to Thursday, the 11th of January. Uh, if we went on another day, we would possibly find that it turns a little bit milder, but that is uh, a bit inconclusive. This is the GEM, the Canadian model. This one is showing that we've got low pressure out to our west. We've got high pressure to our east on uh, Wednesday. And that battle continues through to uh, through to Thursday. So we've got 144 hours. Again, there's that area of high pressure in there over Scandinavia. Just not quite strong enough to get winds into our east. Again, real struggle to get these fronts across the country. So we've got a weather front in there and milder air is starting to move in from the back of that uh, weather front and as we go up to the end next week this is probably the 12th then the Atlantic starts to break through a little bit more definitively so that high pressure the ridge is starting to be pushed back into the far east of Europe and west of Russia as these areas of low pressure are coming in off the Atlantic again we've got the southerly tracking jet stream to uh, deal with that's indicated by the black light so it's down there uh, as we go through into the weekend of 13th, 14th of January. And then just beyond that, we get up to day 10 with the Canadian model, and that's how it looks. Atlantic has well and truly broken through, but it's not mild. It's actually really quite cold, despite the fact we're in an Atlantic flow, because again, that's where the jet stream's going. We've got this low pressure here. We're sending the jet stream on a northwest, southeast trajectory, as has been the case, on and off through the winter. And so cold air is being pushed into this area of low pressure, this deep trough that uh, is moving in from off the Atlantic. So that's cold and unsettled. And certainly from the north, there would be a risk of quite substantial snow uh, with that as the air really is quite cold coming out of Greenland. Uh, finally, for this update, the GFS. So uh, again, this is Tuesday. We've got high pressure over Scandinavia. We've got low pressure out in the Atlantic, going through to the middle and then the second half of next week. When again, we see these weather fronts are really, really struggling up against this area of high pressure. So that's our blocking feature that's up over Scandinavia. It's actually connecting back to some Arctic blocking up here. It's a very large area of high pressure that's covering that area to our east. And the low pressure is out in the Atlantic. It's trying to bring those milder winds in from off the Atlantic. Uh, we go up towards uh, next weekend. This takes us to the 13th, Saturday 13th of uh, January. Still with these low pressures, trying to get in from off the Atlantic. Still, though, with high pressure, uh, or reaching anyway, over Scandinavia and to our east. So again, the, wet, the jet stream is doing something uh, rather like that. We've got a wall of above average heights essentially to our east. And we're sort of in a no man's land really between the high pressure that's over in the east of Europe and the northeast of Europe and all these areas of low pressure in the Atlantic. C probably quite a bit of rain coming in at that point. Uh, and then we go up to day 10 and we bring this deep area of low pressure in off the Atlantic. Similar to what the GEM is doing, that jet stream is digging down 
to our south. It's down there, so we place on the cold side of a jet. And uh, you'll notice the high pressure is sort of weakened a lot to our east. But that's allowing these low pressures to start to push through from the Atlantic. And as they're pushing through, we're starting to build cold air down from the north, or bring cold air down from the north into those areas of low pressure. And so as we get a little bit beyond day 10, which takes us to Wednesday the 17th of January, that low pressure then is slinking down into central parts of Europe. And now we're beginning to turn the winds back into the east. Notice that pressure is starting to rise again over Scandinavia. It never really goes away from Scandinavia, that high pressure. It just weakens a little bit. But uh, on the northern side of this low pressure, we're starting to turn the wind back in to the east, so we're bringing much colder air into this area of low pressure, and that would definitely be bringing us a risk of snow through the middle part of January. And that's where the jet stream is at this point. You'll see that we continue, and this is what's causing all of the confusion with the models this winter. We continue to have the strong jet stream, which is a very strong, and what's the zonal jet stream coming out of Canada into the Atlantic. But instead of doing its normal trick, which would be to be going in that direction, leaving most of the northwest of Europe under mild southwesterly winds. Instead of doing that, the jet stream is coming through the central Atlantic and then diving southwards, dipping southwards down into the Bay of Biscay and into Spain and Portugal. And so that leaves us able to pull cold air into these areas of low pressure. What's happened so far this winter in terms of the cold and the snow that we've had is purely down to what's going on with this jet stream. And certainly up to the middle of January, that looks like continuing as well. And by the middle of January, that's how things look. But for example, by the 18th of January, we are pulling in a bitterly cold east or northeasterly wind. And there's, again, a risk of snow returning through the middle part of the month. Thought I'd just leave you with this because we are seeing a few signs of a sudden stratospheric warming appearing the second half of January. So um, this is from the uh, website metroseal.fr. This is the uh, temperature forecast of that GFS run that you're just looking at at 10 HPA over the North Pole. Where we've got these blue and purple colours, that's where we've got the cold temperatures in the stratosphere over the North Pole at the moment. This is for a couple of days' time. This is 9th of January. Uh, and you'll notice we've got these green areas over here and also down here around the uh, Mediterranean. When you get those... I mean, it's a very slight warming that's going on on either side of the pole at that point. So when you get to that, um, it can sometimes be a precursor in a week or so to uh, get a sudden stratospheric warming, something I've noticed over uh, the years. So when you see that kind of development with minor warmings on either side of the pole, then you can start to think that maybe you've got a bit of a precursor to a stratospheric warming. Now, what this run of the uh, GFS does is it just keeps this slightly, very slight, modest warming uh, going around the edges of the pole until we get towards the extended part of the run. And then all of a sudden, we're going to the 19th to the 20th of January. All of a sudden, the colours suddenly intensify dramatically. And uh, that's how we finish up on the 21st of January, with definite signs of a sudden stratospheric warming starting to occur over Siberia. If we could run on another day or so, I suspect those orange colours would turn red and we would start to see those colours infiltrating into the North Pole. So I think it's the final sort of week to 10 days that we're looking at of January in terms of getting a sudden stratospheric warming. If we do pull off a sudden stratospheric warming through the final week to 10 days of January, there's normally a time delay on getting blocking from uh, getting the warmth down from the stratosphere into the troposphere. I mean, when you get the warmth into the troposphere, then you set up a bubble of high pressure that becomes the block. And the block is how you push the cold air out of the uh, pole and down into the mid latitudes, and you can sustain it because it's a bubble of warm air. You can sustain that block for several days, if not uh, weeks. So there's only a time delay of around two or three weeks. So if we get to this, let's say we get this another day or two on, say around 23rd of January, then you would be looking probably somewhere around the second week of February to really start to see that block coming in. Certainly early enough, though, 
to uh, be considering some very cold conditions indeed, depending, and this is the caveat, depending on where that block sets up, because it's never guaranteed where you're going to get the blocking feature, and uh, so that's always the caveat about these stratospheric warmings you just never know where the block will set up and so you never know where the cold air will be pushed out anyway that's very interesting you'll be hearing a lot more about that i suspect in the coming days but just to wrap it all up so the midday runs of the models are indicating that we're going to stay in a bit of a no man's land really next week between high pressure to the east and low pressure to the west we'll probably have some Fairly cold and dank weather, actually. It's probably not going to be very pleasant at all with a fair amount of cold rain. Eventually, the Atlantic may well break through in around a week's time. And if it does, it'll start to pull in very quickly, I think, some really quite cold air, pull it back from uh, sort of Greenland and Canada around the areas of low pressure. So by mid-January, we may be back into cold weather, not from the east, but from the north and from the northwest, and then the second half of January is possibly going to be a case of all eyes on that stratospheric warming if it happens. Right, weekend forecast coming up tomorrow. Come back for that. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.